So on today's episode, we're joined by the youngest ever Liverpool FC women's captain and England under-23 international, Missy Bowkins. So, Missy Bowkins, welcome to the 3% podcast. The first question I've got for you today, because obviously you've done a little bit of research on you, is how much do you love chocolate? Um, too much, I think, More for you to life. know that. <laughs> um, I think life's all about balance, yeah. so... Even though I'm a professional athlete, I like treating myself to a bit of chocolate. Yeah. I think growing up, my mum used to always give me raisins or like everything was by the book, healthy, healthy. So as soon as I'd go round to my mates or whatever, I'd be stuffing my face with chocolate yeah. sweet before I got back home. And I think now I got to a stage where I just oh, I love it, any, to except fair, for bounties. I use exactly the same excuse for eating all the chocolate myself, so... Yeah. Blame me yeah. mum. <laughs> she hid it from me, yeah, so then I wanted same. it more. We were on more. rations when we were kids, one, one biscuit. You could, you know, we were on, on rations, so like, as soon as I was old enough to buy and eat my own, as much chocolate as I want, I have. Yeah, uh, like come, walking home from school, the, my mum still now won't buy chocolate mm. unless it's dark chocolate or chocolate she likes, no one else likes, because I yeah. won't eat it. So then on my way home from school, I'd go to the shop and I'd buy dairy milk, so I'd buy anything, and she's like, are you messing? I'm like, well, you've got your chocolate, so... Yeah. I need my little treat. Well, that's when people say to me, what's your motivation behind training? So hard I'm like, chocolate. Yeah. The more harder you train, the more you, you can train, treat the more yourself. chocolate you can eat. So. Yeah, that's what I live by. Um, so where did it all start then? Obviously, growing up, how did you, as a female or a young girl in Liverpool, how did you end up playing football? So lots of my cousins were just boys around me and they were just constantly playing. My mum had me trying to do ballet. I was doing ballet. I was doing dance. My mum wanted me in dresses, but I was surrounded by loads of boys around my age, like in my family. So mm. I'd go to my aunties, I'd go to my cousins and they'd just be playing football, playing FIFA. And my mum wanted me to be doing Barbie. But when you're surrounded by so much football, like it's either join in or sit on your own. So. Yeah. They'd be in the garden all running around and they'd say to me, go in goal. So then I'd be in goal. And after, girls are a bit more switched on sometimes than lads when they're younger. So after a little 10 minutes, I think I realised, no, goal's not where you want to be. So I ended up running around and started kicking them and getting the ball and dribbling away How with them. How old was this? I reckon I was about five. But they were older than me, so... They were like, get in and goal. And yeah. then I, I realised very quick. Yeah, mm. I realised very quick, no, you don't want to be in goal. So I started running around, kicking them back, getting the ball, dribbling past them. And from then I've never looked back. I signed for a team when I was five, mostly ill. And it was my cousin's rival team. My uncle was a manager of yeah. Parkview and we used to play against each other. And that's with boys, obviously. That was it was all boys. Um just used to play, didn't bother me. I was just used to it, didn't know any different, mm. play, being the only girl and carried on playing. And when I was eight, I signed for Liverpool. And then obviously once you sign for Liverpool, that's playing with girls or is that still? It was with girls then. So I, I went from playing with boys to Liverpool's academy, all girls. Would and you find that most girls obviously at that age would go through the same, you know, playing with boys initially and then find themselves playing just with all girls at Liverpool? Yeah, I think at such a young age, like the age group I joined, we'd all probably been playing with boys and then you've signed for Liverpool and it was like, oh, we're playing with girls now. It was, you could tell the ones who had been playing with boys and the ones who hadn't, if I'm honest. Like, mm. there's a bit more fight and like grit. It's a, like it's tougher. It's tougher. It's more physical. And then as you go up the age groups, there's girls signing at under 15s and some of them have been playing with boys up until under 15s and you can see the way they play they've been playing with boys like it's, it's just like more aggressive and but it's great mm. and then they're coming in and it's like oh because i haven't been used to that for a few years it's like okay like I know it brings that, you back you're still only like a baby obviously um but it's something what you knew that you love straight away so early on yeah i think my family's massive Liverpool fans and the match or any football would always be on. And I think I just always ended up watching it. Whatever was on the TV, you watched and football was one and I clicked with it. And I think the player I am now has come from how much football and stuff I watched when I was younger because I understand and I read the game well. And I think if you don't watch it, how would you implement it, if that yeah, makes sense? Yeah, it's been part of your life, yeah. hasn't it, from a very... 
young age. Very early age. Um, so that's it basically since since signing for Liverpool. You've been with them up until up until now. But then you s- I'm being lucky enough, but then it's every year you're playing for a contract. So from eight, as soon as you have signed for Liverpool, it's you've got to play well all year mm. and make sure you're improving or you're getting let go at eight. That's what they say to you. Yeah. So it's... It'd be harsh, can it, for, for a lot of kids because a lot of kids obviously don't make it. Um, or what would you say has been the key to obviously getting to where you are now at 21 and being on a big picture on the side of the cop and obviously now being like a, a, a face in which people are familiar with. No, I'm not a, a massive football fan. That's the truth. I do support Liverpool. My son absolutely loves them. I take him to more of the games, but I'm obviously aware of who you are and I don't even know every player in Liverpool first team, the men's, but obviously I know who you are. Um, I, so how's that been? I think it's just come from... I've always had the attitude as I'm not getting beat. I'm very competitive and like if someone was to get signed to take my place when I was younger or like to compete against me, I'd always make sure I'd beat them in a race if we were doing runs. Mm. I'm even though it's not football, it's running. Running's part of football. You've got that competitive nature. I've, I've got to win this race. Or like if it's a one v one, you're not getting past me. And I think I've had that from a young age and I've still got it now and you've got to have that attitude if you don't want to if you don't want to be the best then what's the point in yeah some like people say it's either shutting your bomb or shutting it you're not but I suppose if you're thrown into a back garden with a, with a gang of lads older cousins then I suppose it's like it, it's it's you know you're fighting for your life yeah. <laughs> effectively <laughs> yeah, aren't yeah, you literally. five years old with a load of like bigger kids boys all yeah. kicking footballs at you so but I think you are it, I think you've either I do think you can't teach the mentality or you can grow it. Yeah, but I you think can't like teach you've got to start that. you've got to start mm. somewhere. But then I think mindset, like I've been fortunate enough from a young age to have psychology lessons, like and it opens your eyes up and it learns you're a lot more into like football. So a fan would see football as just football, where mm. I see football as you no, know, your mindset, your your training, your eating, your watch it off the pitch like where yeah, a fan a just thinks it's 90 it? minutes it's a it's a competitive mm-hmm. game but they don't see the you're in a half nine ten well, anyone can be a great athlete while the coach is standing over them can't you but yeah. as, as you're saying now which i know and i've seen myself just through fine it's like it's the stuff what goes on outside the gym it's just as important if not in a lot of cases as important as what the work what you actually do when you're in the gym We've all, we, we, you know, we're from Liverpool. It's renowned, isn't it, for having like amazing athletes and fighters, but they just don't make the cup because they're too distracted or easily led or round the wrong people, this type of thing. So, And I think that was like a big thing. You get to the age 14, 15, you're in senior school, or you're made to go and out, or mm. like there's parties or whatever. And Friday night, I'd have a game Saturday morning. So it's, oh, I can't come, I've got a game tomorrow. And it's having that discipline of, no, I've got a game in the morning yeah. and, t- and the you're made to understand. what you're doing as well, isn't it? Because obviously it's hard to make them decisions if you're not actually doing something you're really passionate about. And I think I've been fortunate enough to have mates around me who are supportive in that. Yeah, fair enough. Where I know other girls who have had mates who are like, are you messing? Just come. But it's so easy to fall into that trap where I've had mates who, oh, no, we understand You've got a game and yeah. still now, like if they go for food and I've, I say, oh, I'm away, I've got a away game. Oh, no problem. We'll go next week. Like, it's not a problem yeah, where that's amazing, other yeah. girls of, I know, and probably happens in the men's game, it happens in every sport. I've probably got mates, oh, are you messing? And like, that's just, I think it's a Liverpool attitude. Oh, come on. Yeah. Don't, don't be missing out, but you've got to have that thing. The top players, top athletes have got that thing. I don't care if I'm missing out. Mm. You will never achieve what I'm going to achieve. Yeah. Like, well, anyone who follows me knows I, I always stress the importance of having like good people around you. Basically, they're the same, haven't you? Become the five people you spend the most time with. Mm-hmm. So I definitely, uh, it's something I can relate to and it's something I understand. I do think it's a big thing, like who who's around you, because if you've got people around you who on and who don't want you to push or like do well, then you're just going to, even though you could have the best, best attitude mindset or whatever but if there's people around you like drip feeding you 
things that you don't want to hear. You're eventually going to, one day, you might be having a bad day and then you do strip out of your standards and you might be like, oh, come on, let's yeah, go for team. It takes team. one mistake, It takes it? one mistake and then you could have a bad game, then you're out the team for a few weeks and then it's getting back in the team. Mm. So I think you've just got to be, you've got to be on it all the time as a professional athlete. What age do you think it was when you decided, like, football, that is it? There's nothing else for me. When I was... Was there ever anything else apart from football? Not really. I think as soon as I signed for Liverpool and you'd be going and watching the first team play, then I knew you could be a professional footballer because when I was growing up, I thought, I want to be Steven Gerrard. I didn't know I could be a Farrah Williams or a... Like, a Missy Bokeh. A Missy <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know like there was that outlet. I just thought, I want to be playing at Anfield. I thought, because I was playing with boys, I'd be in the Liverpool men's team. Yeah. But then as soon as I signed for Liverpool and seen there was a first team that I could be part of, I want to be a footballer. Mm. I want to play for play for Liverpool. But obviously it's grown a lot massively, like especially the last couple of years. But there was a point where you'd have to work as well, obviously alongside being a female professional footballer, wasn't there? So, yeah, so I'd say six years ago, there were still girls playing and, and working, working at the same time. And I think only the past few years when I've stepped into the first team, like I get called a silver spoon by some of the older ones because they say <laughs> you don't know how lucky you are because yeah. what they had to, they were studying, they were working, they were yeah. playing. They see supporting the football from yeah. other, other avenues. But then I've when I've broken, just luck of my age, um, it's been a professional environment and we're lucky enough that we don't have to... Yeah, I like to say fortunate. Fortunate. Definitely. Fortunate. There's not For, much luck to get I know, I don't know why it's luck definitely, like, but uh, fortunate Definitely enough. fortunate that, that we're seeing it grow so quickly yeah. at the minute. What, um, maybe like four or five years' time, where do you see it being? Obviously, at the rate of what it's growing now. I think massive. Like, after the Euros in the summer, mm -hmm. you're seeing the crowds and stuff they were getting especially England winning the Euros, I think that's going to push it. English football, English women's football even more. And you see now, like, our league, Chelsea and Arsenal, they're playing in the Emirates, they're playing at Stamford Bridge yeah, and they're filling the it. Next question, how long do you think it's going to be before you're actually walking into Anfield every, every week? Hopefully not long. I think it's just trusting the process and you don't want to make too big steps too soon. Too soon. But like just drip feeding it in and that's what's happening now and it's great like we got the opportunity to play at Anfield this year against Everton it didn't go Amazing. the way it planned but like it was the still something it? off my bucket list and hopefully many more and once you've done it once you're hungry for it to happen again and again mm. and if the way the game's going and like keeps improving and getting bigger more people tuning in watching it then the game's just gonna grow mm. Okay, so school then, obviously you're in school, but you're so passionate and obsessed with football. How did that affect you? Did you find that affect your school? If you're academic in school, did you do well in school or? I was, I went the top, top sets, but I went bottom, bottom sets. But like I was in school and I'll be honest, I was just thinking of football. I wanted to be a footballer, like I'd have days I'd always do my work and stuff, but I'd be the one clicking a pen. I'd be having a laugh. Having a bit of banter. Having a bit of joke. But like when I done my GCSEs, I got seven GCSEs and I'll be honest, I didn't revise because I was finishing school and going to training and all my focus was is football. I was at your 15, 16, but that's a key part of your football course, career yeah. at the same time when you're sitting GCSEs. That's when I wanted to start a lot pushing. of pressure, isn't it? I wanted to start pushing. I started going with the first team a few times. So my mind was on, oh, I could be pushing into the first team here. But then you've got your match due to see on Monday. So I was fully focused on football because I was so driven to do it. But your education is so important. And I'm glad that I did come out with grades because yeah. I ended up breaking into the first team and going to college. And I've Come, I've got a sport B Tech now, level three, and I went to uni for like a week because I got the grades to do that from my the sports diploma. But it wasn't for me. But at least I can go back in five or six years if, it, if I ever wanted to. But you can't miss them opportunities to do it when you're younger because as soon as 
you've left school, you can't really. It's hard to go back and sit. Mm. Other it's like exam. a window there, isn't it? Where yeah. like everyone's always a little bit unsure on what way to go. But obviously, the fact that you had football, it's like. I don't think there's ever been a plan B really by the... No, by it's the always just Leicester. been football in my mind. But then I'm glad that at education, like at the time I would, I was thinking, oh, it doesn't mean nothing. But now like I've opened my eyes up and like I know tomorrow if I think I'm ready to st study again, I can go to university. But I might never think of it, but at least I've got that there sitting it's waiting there, yeah. if I ever need it. Where if I didn't, do that go to college and just fly off to football then you never know touch wood but you could get an injury it's sports you could anything, anything happen. could happen so you've got to have something to fall back on but but it won't will it <laughs> hopefully not <laughs> <laughs> um but you but you never course, know with yeah. sports so you've got to always think always of what mm -hmm. the what ifs mm -hmm. so the next question something we spoke about obviously before uh, before the podcast started, you got diagnosed with ADHD at some point. At what age was you? When um, it was when I was like seventeen, eighteen. Then Liverpool was starting to notice. Like it went in school. It was mm. after like okay. my concentration. Sometimes like I'd be on it and then I'd be off it. And I think it's hard to explain but I think they must have noticed the difference like usually football I'm 100% on it but it was getting my manager now noticed it a lot it was getting to 60 minutes in a game and you maybe just start to wonder I a was bit. I'd have five minutes where I'd just do things that I wouldn't normally do yeah like I'd try a pass what and I is it that you've gone right through school though and obviously no one's picked up on it and then obviously it's it's only in your football career and you think like that's probably the time when you are the most present and the most focused and switched on. Obviously you've got to be to achieve what you've achieved at, at 21, but to go right through the whole schooling system and no one's ever pick up on something like that. And then obviously to catch it at like 18, that's a, it's mad, isn't it? I think that's what's so important that people need to know is what mine might be different and no two people course, are the same. Yeah. So like in school, I might have clicked a pen or like been having a laugh and a joke, but mm. someone next to me could have been not being able to concentrate at all in a lesson and be messing around constantly where I knew how to, some, like if there was work, there was a task for yeah, me to you do, could do. So I could Well, obviously you're goal driven, aren't you? Yeah. If there's something needs to do and it gets, it gets, it gets done, done, doesn't it? But that's where someone else could be completely different where, oh, I'll do that later because yeah. there's a girl, Leanne, in my team and she's, 28 29 now and she's just been diagnosed that as an adult with adhd and mm. she won't mind me talking about it because i was speaking to her earlier and she's completely opposite to me so leanne used to forget keys or like time and like would be miles off it but she's never knew she's had adhd all this long she just thought she was a bit dopey and i think it's so important that like we was talking today and she was playing before she started taking the medication She'd take a touch and look up for a pass and she'd just see a uh, hundred things going on in her mind and she didn't know what to do. Yeah, and be fuzzy. Be, fuzzy she mind. was like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. Where now she said like she's looking up and she's seeing a pass and I think it's making her realise and like we talk a lot and like the other day I was having like a bit of a low day and she's come up to me, are you okay? I was like, oh, one of them days. And like we're helping each other like and it's great because... She's so shocked herself that she didn't yeah. know. And it's something I'm not an expert on, but obviously I coach 13 to 15 year old young men and a lot of them have been diagnosed with a condition ADHD. And I, I do genuinely personally believe that they can be too quick sometimes to diagnose certain kids with um, the condition because I just a lot of them are just really creative. And you find a lot of creative people, especially the way the schooling system is, it's like they don't fit in that box and you just go, okay, well, there must be something... And you say it's ADHD. Obviously, in your case, it sounds different because obviously, especially at the age of what you've kind of figured out what, what it is, maybe why you're switching off at 60 minutes in into the game. But the fact that you're aware of what it is now, obviously, then you're able to work around it around you and come up with a solution. And well, obviously, that, that, so that's we got, helpful. So when the manager was pulling me, it was like, at 60 minutes, you're just switching off. Mm. Like you're doing things you wouldn't normally do. And 
it got to a stage where we thought of a thing. So at around 55 minutes, he'd shout on, Bo, and just like give me a thumbs up or like a nod. And it'd yeah. make me think, right, next five Stay minutes, focused. keep mm. it basic. Just get through the next five minutes. Make sure, like, don't do nothing daft. And I think doing that, That's like, helped. it's, yeah, because I've got like a routine and it just but snaps you back into it. Isn't it? Yeah. Just to say, you know, it just snaps you back into tune yeah, where you might. Because, like, mm. in school, 60 minute lesson, after 20 minutes, half an hour, I was bored. So it's like, not that I'm bored, but you get to a stage in a football match and you're like, you might get too comfortable because. It, course, it's yeah. not too comfortable in your mind you just might think I know what you're oh, trying to say because it's not boredom yeah, is it it's, it's actually not, it's just something what happens yeah you know? like oh I might try this through ball pass but then it's like oh it's not the right time to do because you've got to mm. pick moments in football when yeah, to go forward right when to keep it and I think that's what's woke me up a lot like him saying that to me and me realising and I'm lucky that he gave me that information because Obviously I'd have never, no I'd I'd line, never yeah. noticed it because it's all the data of how they analyse games and stuff. He must have been getting like data yeah, at I this time. Yeah, I think that's time. amazing the fact that obviously you can go to school and you know, pick up on it and then in football and in the sport and at that age as well. Uh, obviously they've cottoned on to it and now they, they, they're obviously helping helping you uh, overcome it and stuff yeah, like that. But again, it's a testament just to see how far you've come out even, even knowing that. But for, for me, I see a lot of creative young kids, 13 to 15, and maybe they're not designed to sit in a classroom all day and, and do subjects which they don't really enjoy or have got no interest in. And the mind does wonder, but a lot of them are like very, very creative and special, special kids. Do you know what I mean? I do think like growing up, I was just in the, you're just a cheeky kid or like mm. that's, I went like. No, you get a lot north. of kids that are just full of energy. Yeah. And, and like they, they are very honest in my, my opinion they're very quick to say oh he's, they, there's got to be something wrong with him because you can't keep still for well that's me like I'll be, I'm sat like that having <laughs> my honest, tea I'm now I'm very similar to myself I'm sat like that having my tea now my mum's hitting yeah, me under the table keep still my missus is the same you but can't I'm... watch a film I'm like that watching a film eating me chocolate <laughs> yeah. legs going she's like fucking pack it in will you yeah. do you know what I mean so that's my mum's like keep still I'm like what am I doing I don't even realise I'm like that, that tapping my leg but, or like I'm always playing with something so I'm sat here now and I'm moving my Not hand fidget. just because it just keeps me occupied and mm. I don't even realise I'm doing it but other people might notice like she can't keep still because yeah. in like team meetings and that the girls are like oh you can't keep still because I'll be playing with a bobble I'll be but I'm still taking everything in it's just that's my way of concentrating yeah distracting but, your body yeah. while your mind's fixed, fixed on yeah. whatever it is um Obviously highs and lows, then we'll, we'll speak about maybe, you know, if I had to say what's your, what's your greatest achievement or your biggest high. So if I know you're only 21, there's still a long a long way to go, but, you know, what would you say is the the um, the, the, the best thing you've experienced so far in football? I think signing your first professional contract, I think all your hard work from when you're a kid, every year, every session, as soon as you've signed that first professional, it's like relief, all your hard work's come off. It's paid off. But then you're only signing. I signed a two-year deal. So it was relief, but then you've got to work again to course, get another yeah. contract. So like, it's probably my biggest high and because it was it's a like dream a come true. Now, but then it? you're like, right, I'll kick on from this. What's my next achievement? Like, what do I want to do next? And mm. I've probably, I've got so many highs. Like, I'm living my dream. I'm playing for Liverpool. That's what I have wanted to do since I was a kid. Like, I've captained Liverpool. I'm the youngest women's captain. Like, yeah, you just robbed me next just, question. It's just, <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's things that I've dreamed of when I was a kid. Like, I've got so many highs, but I think even, like, playing for England all the youth ages, like, it's not many years you play for now. Now, isn't it? yeah, not many people can say they've they've done it. Like I remember, I went to the under 17s Euros, and anyone can go and buy an England shirt. And I, before the tournament starts, the man just give us our numbers, and there's a, a badge on it, the Euros badge, and it gets a different colour every year. And he said, "No one else is gonna ever have this shirt. That's your number. It's got that badge on, like." It's the Euros badge, but a different colour for each year. Or, yeah, it's what's unique, isn't it? It's so, he was like, you can't go and buy that. You've worked hard to get this shirt, so mm. enjoy the experience. And like, it made me realise, like... 
How special it I've is. I've still got all the shirts in ours and it's like no one else has got that shirt. Like you could just go and buy one, but you can't buy one. one with that badge on. Mm. It's representing your country at a Euro finals at 16. It didn't go to plan like where you're saying highs and lows. In the semi-final, I got injured, ruptured my ankle ligaments. 10 minutes into the game, I had to go off. I'm in my head, I'm in agony, but I'm like, semi-final, could be in the final. The top three went to the World Cup. After the game, we got beat, so we was in the playoffs, so we had to come third to go to the World Cup. Mm -hmm. I'm in the hospital waiting for a scan results. Got my results back, you're out. I'm like, oh my God, I'm out. I'm, Had you I'm never had any injuries up until that point in football? Little growing niggles, little but niggles, nothing like nothing serious. where I was in a boot. I was going to, after the tournament ended, I was going home to see a specialist on my ankle. Mm. I happened to go to London. And like ligaments and stuff can obviously be a lot worse than a break, can't they? Exactly. That's the first thing they said to me. It's going to be a lot more complicated. You'd have been better snapping your ankle. Mm. And I'm like, what? And they're like, no, really, you'd have been better just breaking your bone. I'm 16 year old. So you tell me, I'm like, what? Yeah, well, your bones <laughs> heal really yeah. quick, don't they? So I was like clueless, didn't have a clue. Mm -hmm. So the games happened. So I'm at the side watching it in the stands and we didn't qualify for the World Cup. So I'm like, oh, gutted. And mm -hmm. then go home and then I've got... I've got to get my ankle better then. So go through so, all the whole rehab, rehab process and everything yeah. else. And, but and how then, long was that then before you were back playing again? Well, there was that was in the May and pre-season starts again in the end of June. Yeah. And while I was rehabbing in my summer, the first team manager said, we want you to come on pre-season tour with us. So I'm, I'm like, I'm getting back fifth for this. Mm. So I'm doing everything I can to get back fit. Went on the tour, was absolutely fine. My ankle, like, I'd done everything I could to get there. Got back, played a game for the reserves, went in for a tackle, done it again. Wow. So I'm like, oh my days. Mm. Like, I've just done two months work on my ankle and... It's just when again. I know that feeling because I've had a couple of knee surgeries. Well, I had four in total. Oh. And I've basically done the same. Blew my knee out a, a week or two before a fight. I've just gone through the whole process. Had KO surgery. Got back training. Three months later, training again for a fight. And, and it's gone again. So I, I can feel your pain there. You know, I've definitely experienced something very, very similar. <laughs> we could just stand in cow and cry. <laughs> I'm cry like my eyes out. It's gone again. It's gone again. So, so then... It's got to get it back. So I went back to the academy mm. and the physio. He'll probably watch this and he'll probably be laughing his head off. So after like a month, I'd be like, can I play the weekend? He'd be like, you're playing next week. Yeah. So I'd train dead hard that week thinking I'm playing this week. He'd go, no, next week. He'd done was it he to doing me. that on purpose? Or was He'd that... done it to me for two months. So I thought I was playing on the weekend so you for two months. Week for eight weeks. Yeah, so I'd do everything properly. And then I'd be like, yeah, I'm playing. He'd go, no, next week. Mm. I'd be like, are you messing? He'd be laughing his head off. He'd go, come on, one more week. So that week I'd try, I'd do everything. Be knackered after the session. We were doing everything for my ankle. I'd be like... I'm al how long am I allowed tomorrow? He'd go, no, next week. Yeah, it's like mental torture <laughs> then for eight weeks. But I suppose... But I didn't know it was eight weeks until <laughs> the end of it because yeah. I just thought, oh, it's next week. So work hard again next week. He'll let me play this week. Mm. But you probably look back on experiences like that now and you're thankful for them because no, obviously... No, he's touch wood since then. Man, everything was perfect. perfect. Like Because sometimes you need to get told no for you to realise it needs extra time because... Yeah. I'd just have a, an eye brief run and play. Like, I've just got that. I just want to be playing all the time. Mm. So you need someone. And there to protect That's you. what the staff obviously are there for. Obviously, with a club for. like Liverpool, or, you know, anything like that, they obviously know what to do and don't be sure. Ex for as painful as it is and you're climbing the walls, you've got to take their advice, haven't you? So Exactly. They're the specialists. And, like, even though I laugh about it now at the time, I was fuming 16, thinking, are you messing? But mm. then... It's now I'm older and I understand how much, how important injury prevention and pre-act and like keep, I still do ankle exercises now where yeah. 16 year old me, I'd be thinking, That's it. Some just people play learn, footy. Learn too late, don't they? Do you know what I mean? So, so 
I was lucky enough to learn at a young age. What other lo- there's been loads. For, for being a f- footballer, there's highs and lows like all the time, but other one. But for, from a fan's perspective, you wouldn't really you wouldn't see know. too much of that, would you? So like another low, I'm playing well for Liverpool and there's an England squad. Didn't get selected, but I think I should be selected. And you're just like, it's probably happened to so many footballers and you're like, oh. mm. but you've got to keep working hard, keep working hard, keep working hard. And I think sometimes like people don't understand how it feels to get left out like a fan as you're saying like when a world cup squad's getting announced they think oh they should be in it but they don't realize what that player who hasn't been selected mm. probably going through like i think when a world cup squad's getting announced like this summer and people are saying why is that not player not being selected tagging them on social media but they don't realize like how deflated that player will be and i think that's what fans wouldn't realise like how much players work hard to achieve the goals mm. and every player wants to go to a World Cup and if you don't get selected it could be a matter of an opinion like I could rate this player you could say I don't rate them of course it's yeah. just someone's opinions. got to make the decision someone's got to make the... their own opinion and it's up to the manager to pick who they like mm. and I think that's what but again that's another testament to yourself because obviously there'll be a, a lot of footballers say and they get the sand and they get themselves really down by the sands of it. That's not really you, is it? You're more like half and show you, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, well, that's, I didn't get selected and I was, that was my attitude. I'm getting in the next squad and mm. I made sure that I'd done everything and I got in the next squad and I've been in the squad for the 23s, like every camp since I've mm. been eligible to. And it's every time you're there, it's, I need to be playing well, not only at England, but at clubs, because I want to be in the next squad. Yeah. And I think you've got to just be on it. I know it's like you're, it's, you've got to be consistent every single day to get selected. To yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what people don't realise. It's not easy to be consistent every single day because no, no one's not. perfect. And... You've got, we all have our off days, don't off we? Days. We don't feel like doing certain things. And But like you could be playing on the telly and that could be your off day and that could be your opportunity. So mm. you've got to try and be it. Do you ever feel any pressure in that sense? Especially now, obviously you, you became so popular and it, you know, everyone's eyes are on you. Every female football, you know, male football fans who are watching Liverpool, watching Liverpool women's. Do you ever feel like you're under pressure to perform or? I think... Is there anything you've ever struggled with in the past? I've never struggled with it in the past. I don't think like pressure's ever like affected me, but being a professional athlete on the main stage, there's pressure. There's eyes on you. There's isn't eyes it? on you. And you do one thing wrong and it does get noticed. And but I think that's where you've got to just cut it out. Like, if you thought about it too much, this is just my opinion. Like, I know if I think about the pressure and you've got to thrive off it. Because if you don't, then It'll it will eat you up. You. Mm. Because I've actually again, so I've obviously come from a fighting background, yeah. so I dead interesting to speak about things like this because everyone's got a different like a view in it, or the, it affects them in a different way. That affect me. Obviously, I I was very like I'm a deep thinker anyway, so it was always like, well, maybe people won't think I'm good, not even if I win or I lose, if I don't fight well, like I did worry like people mightn't think I'm as good as I believe I am and stuff like that. So obviously, you haven't had them them type of thoughts for you by the sound of it haven't just been like one way forward but then I have had games where things aren't going right and I'm like ooh yeah and it does it's frustrating for the next five minutes ten minutes you're thinking oh what's going on what's going on (laughs) you okay yeah it's the weather change (laughs) <laughs> Don't say that to me. <laughs> <coughs> you need to get in an ice bath every morning. I can't you get like an them. ice bath. Why? I get in them for recovery, but I, I, I hate cold. And that's why you do them. I struggle, but like, if you threw me in, I'd be fine. But mm-hmm. like, do you have to do them regularly with with the football? Yeah. How often do you just do them? They're there every day after training. Do you do them every day? Not every day. Do you ever dodge them? Not dodge, but Avoid at them. England every camp. Every day I'm in the ice bath. Yeah. 
at Liverpool. Some days, some days not. It depends what my body feels. If my body's sore, mm. I get in it. But you, I feel like, do you get in it for recovery or for your mind? To be honest, when I used to fight, I'd be in them every weekend, just as part of me, me recovery over the weekend before obviously we go back to mm. intense training on the Monday. Now, there's there's loads of reasons, loads of benefits why they do them. It's something I'm, I'm, I'm really into. I've spent like, time in Poland with Wim Hof and all these different things. But for me, the discipline side of it is a big thing. It's like, I actually put a video on Instagram this morning in my ice bath. Like, I look at it every morning and think, for fuck's sake, got to get in that now. But my body just does it. It's like automatic. Yeah. It'd be the same with a lot of things with you because obviously you're so regimented with your training. And it's like, I'll be thinking I don't want to do it. But my body's already like, in. trials are off and the next minute I'm in there for reason. But it's afterwards, I know the, how it makes me feel afterwards. Like, I feel a lot more clear. Like, it's, like the, the key to the ice baths for me, it's teaching you to manage stress. Mm-hmm. We live in a world full of stress. It's teaching you to manage your emotions, your breathing, all these different things, what go on. Because once you jump in that ice, you know yourself, ice water, it's like you're in fight or flight. You're fighting, f- yeah. essentially, some people are fighting for their life. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So when I get an ice bath, I'm like, let's play a game, alphabet Distract game. Distract yourself. So like, A, and you've got to think of a, a footy team named beginning with A, yeah. just because to keep get the eight minutes over as quick as possible. Because yeah. as soon I have to go in in socks, I mean, like socks are still on because <laughs> once your feet are cold, they're cold. But after the first 45 seconds, you know, it's like, fine, it's done. But it's it's getting me in there. That's mm, my thing. For some people, it's the worst nightmare, isn't it? I yeah. know people think I'm crazy. Do you know what I mean? It's different for you because obviously you're getting in for recovery and you're still playing so much football and... Like, I know, you know how for me and a lot of people it's like they are like, using mad it's bringing my missus thinks I'm absolutely nuts in the ice bath every morning she's obviously watching me on the CCTV <laughs> again I don't know the thing she thinks like, I'm crazy but I wouldn't get up and think oh, I'll get in the ice bath like I don't enjoy it to yeah. like do it but I can see like l- the benefits the benefits of doing it like it does wake you up it does clear your mind like you get out and you do feel You're refreshed don't you? you feel refreshed but I'm just I'd love to be able to think, oh, I'll do it, but yeah. I couldn't, I wouldn't say now, oh, I'd do that tomorrow because I probably won't. I think mindset wise, you don't need it anyway, by the <laughs> sounds of it. So <laughs> but, you just keep using but, it for your recovery and you'll but, be sad. But I do think though, like <clears throat> some of the, there's a girl, Leanne, who I said about before, after training, she goes and gets in the sea. And I'm like, you crazy? It's yeah. like free mind. Like Brief, fresh yeah, air. I get it. Do you know what I mean? It's all stuff I do anyway. If not, not for fun, but for fun, but it's not fun while you're actually but like, doing it a lot of the time. But I'm like, it's freezing. She's like, yeah, but you feel so good after it. And like, I'm like, fair enough, you probably would. But because I've never done it, I'm like, wow, you're crazy. You have it's to give freezing. it a go one time and yeah. drag, drag your half fella down there with you as well. <laughs> not Speaking a chance you before, you'll get in. He, he hates the cold. Yeah, there's not a chance you'll get in. Give me in for a couple of days and, and you'll have them up mountains in pairs of shorts in the middle of winter. <laughs> there's not a chance. Um, if you didn't play football, then what would you do? I don't know. From a young age, I've just wanted to play football and I've never thought about anything else. Mm. So, what does a week in the life of Missy Bow look like? So, we're in Tuesday, Wednesdays, Friday, Saturdays, game Sunday usually, but sometimes you could have a game on a Wednesday. So, it does differ. Alternate. But majority of the time, Tuesday, go up about nine, be in for ten, have my breakfast, pre-act, meeting, then train, then you're in from training, you're fueling, you're eating, then gym, then come home, relax, then go again Wednesday. Similar, but pitch sessions usually a bit harder on a Wednesday. Mm. Eat, gym again. Off Thursday, Friday, the same. In the gym, be more power stuff on a Friday because we've got game on a Sunday. Yeah. Then... Saturday's a lighter session. We go through like game plan, set plays. Some days you could then after training travel. So this Saturday, oh no, this Saturday I'll be traveling to London and then we'll be playing on the Sunday. So yeah. straight from training, I'll go with the team. Some days you go home and then you've got a home game, you turn up on your Sunday and you play. 
So do you enjoy that side of things like the traveling, but all like the girls and obviously you have loads of friends in the club and Yeah, I think it's nice to socialise. Like we have a laugh, we play cards. I bring my PlayStation, have it up on the coach and we all play against you each other. You never get beat? No. <laughs> no. What happens if you lose, you're a sore loser? Yeah. Yeah. I've lost once. The manager beat me. I, it was straight after the game and I went concentrating. Yeah. And he's beat me and he's put it all over Twitter. You go to FIFA? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, MJ loves FIFA. So, like, he's literally put it everywhere. So now everyone knows I've been beat by him. <laughs> mm, have to get him, won't you? Yeah. In terms of, like, the socialising, and how do you find, obviously, balancing between having such a busy, obviously, football, and being a professional footballer, a professional career, so to say, with, like, your social life and your friends and you got a boyfriend and yeah. things like that i think it's important to have the balance because you've got to switch off from football sometimes yeah. so some nights i'll just go for my tea with my mates and they don't have a clue about football so we won't talk about football nice, at yeah. all they might say oh i would how did you get on the weekend or like like what was training like but we don't go into details because they don't have a clue we end up, I end up saying there's no point in me explaining it because you don't understand. Mm. Um, or like, it's, or we might just chill and watch a film or something, but it's nothing, can't do anything that's like energy draining really because yeah. I'm in training the next day. Do you go out much to like town or anything like that? When I was younger, maybe like every now and then, but not really, I'm more go for me tea. Yeah, I you run out now, you probably get everyone wants to talk about football as well, <laughs> wouldn't you? Every time like I do go out with my mates or whatever, everyone's asking, how's your footy going? That that's yeah. probably the most main question I get asked when I am out. Mm. Um Okay. Going back to them meaningful and uh, good memories, what was it like being on obviously the coaches um with the first team, like the men's team? Um the parade, what was that like? The parade, probably one of the best days of my life. Like, it was like a big party. <laughs> yeah, I it? can't explain like how good it was. Like, yeah. what I seen, like, you can't. I've got videos and stuff, but it doesn't do it justice. Like, mm -hmm. feeling everyone like waving up to you. Like, Calvin Harris is on the bus in front, there was no like, DJ and for us. All. No, like. And you're just going down streets and you're just seeing red smoke just in your eyes. But obviously being from Liverpool and, and you probably know most of them streets what you're driving. You probably drove down them in the car with your mum or your dad or... Literally, and not only that, I've been one of the kids at the parade or like as a fan yeah. looking up at, at the men's team and then for me to be getting that response as well, oh, it was unbelievable. And like, Do you ever stop for a minute and just like pinch yourself and think like this is really happening or is it just so because I know we, we can all be guilty of like just getting caught in the flow of doing whatever we're doing but I think I don't do that enough I think I have done it and I've like when I've achieved things I'm thinking wow yeah it's like important to do that you know because obviously you know you're very very driven but it is actually important to acknowledge the like you know your wins and your successes and, and these different things but I think because I'm so young my mindset is like well what's next like I'm not settling for what I've already achieved like yeah. there's so much more I still want to achieve so mm. I do think I should pinch myself a bit more and think like oh no you might have you might need to reflect and because you can't forget what you've already done because yeah. that's got you there it's just you not getting that. caught too much yeah. in going forward and not acknowledging the things what but by the sounds of it, obviously you're very grateful and you know aware of the stuff what you've done and how amazing it is the likes of that experience like you just could never buy anything like that, could you? No, like... I and even for like your parents and, and your family and obviously your boyfriend and the people who are around you, like imagine how proud they must be as well, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think like it's massive, I, but I don't realise how big it is. But then like when my dad and my mum, my nan are like, oh my God, they talk about it and they get a bit emotional, then I'm like, it's a big thing. But because I'm doing it every day and playing yeah, it's for... Who you are, isn't it's, it? I don't know no mm. different at the minute like this is what I've wanted to do so I'm doing it like I don't realize like how massive it is sometimes but mm. then other days I do sit back and I'm like I'm playing for Liverpool like I've just been on a parade with all the it men must have been a moment when you were on that bus and you're like how did I end up here 
Do you know what I mean? Wow. I, I was just looking around and I was like, oh my days. And I was like, that video. <laughs> yeah, one we kiss is all time, it but takes. I was watching it on, uh, on telly. I was just like, wow. Like, it was like unbelievable. It was so good. And then after it, we all went to like a party all together. And it's like a funny story. So I've texted my mum saying, we had our trackies on. So I've texted my mum saying, Will you bring me some clothes in case we do anything after? Mm. She's like, yeah, no problem. So anyone in Liverpool wants to be in this party, like all the players, all the families. So my mum comes and the man said, do you want to go up and give her a... No, it's all right, I'll just leave her here. I'm thinking, no, come up, mum, texting her, because I was upstairs, I didn't go down. She's like, no, it's all right, I'm windswept. So because of it, being all messed up, walking in Tamfield, <laughs> she wouldn't come upstairs. But everyone who'd been at that parade today wanted to be in where we was. Yeah. And my mum's like, Typical no, I'm, wind, mom, I'm hey. windswept. Yeah. She'll probably kill me for that, but I'm windswept. She'll probably kill me as well. <laughs> yeah, probably, but I'm windswept. So she didn't She didn't end up coming up, but she missed out. Mm. And was that great then party? And obviously with all, all the, the, uh, the two teams together. Yeah, like... A lot of them, they all had the, like international and stuff, but like mm. just we was all getting pictures with our trophy, their trophies, and it just showed the successful season. And it was nice to see them doing well and us doing well. What would you say? Obviously, Liverpool aren't doing so well at the minute. What's what's your opinion on obviously why they've you know, they're not performing basically compared to how successful they've been and how well they've been playing over the last couple of years? I think. I don't know what exactly it is, but I just think they look like tired and a bit I, deflated. Yeah, but because Klopp's not the same, is he? Like, I'm a massive Klopp fan. I'm, no, I don't. I confess, I don't watch all the games. My son absolutely loves it. I'm a massive Klopp fan. Like I love Klopp, and and even to see him, you can see his energy not the same. He seems down at the minute. I don't know whether the team's a reflection of how he's feeling or he's a reflection of how the team's feeling or. I but think there's just something missing, isn't that's there? That's just football, though. You're going to have ups. You can't... I don't know any football team that has lasted for mm. 15 years consistently, the same players. Mm. And it's I think never they happened. have been so consistent over the last... They've set the bar so high, haven't they? It's like... Like, that's what everyone's expecting. But <clears> then <throat> if players are coming and players are going, there's going to be a transition stage to then get back up to that. And I think that's what we're in at the minute. Mm. But we'll get back there, won't we? Yeah, 100%. Um, going back to England then obviously you must have plans to be playing for the, the first team How, when do you see that happening in I your own in, in your own mind obviously you know you're very driven and you know I am working towards n like now getting called up this year this season I want to get called up this season and every day I'm training and working hard to do everything I can to get called to up this season it might not happen but in my eyes, there's a World Cup in the summer and nothing. You can do everything in your power. It just takes one call up, and if I do well, I'm, I'm in. The, I could be in the squad, you but you just need the opportunity. But if I'm not performing week in week out, I won't get the opportunity. So nothing's stopping me. It's just a matter of opinions or timing. When that's just it's just life. It's going to happen at some yeah. point, isn't it? It's just obviously, when? obviously when, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Um. Something else you touched on a bit earlier was obviously you've done some mental training, so to say. It's a big bit of a big part of the podcast and stuff like that. What 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 did you mean by like mental? Or could so you like explain that a little bit? We've got psychologists and we've at had the club. at the club and we've had psychologists at the club for ages and so we'll have a meeting every Tuesday like after a game and football's not only about results but like if we're not all on the same page as a team thinking what we want to achieve or what we want to get out of the game or the session, we've all been not trained, but we're all talking to each other. Communicating. Communicating. It's called coherence. It's where everyone's basically singing from the same M sheet or on the same page is, yeah. a, good, is a good way but to put it. I think if we didn't do that, the conversations might not get said. So like some days... We might come in after a loss and we're in psychology and if anyone's got anything to say, it gets let out there. What's said there doesn't get dragged out of there. But we've all took it in and 
challenge each other. Mm. Like, I think we have presentations also and our psychologists will like explain things like some words I don't know what they mean and they'll go into detail and about your chimp and everyone's mind thinks differently and just because I'm thinking this, the player next to me might not think the exact oh, sure. same as you me. Sure and, and from our own point of view and perspective. We're a team, we? so we need to be as close on the same page as possible, mm. but without them sessions, how is it possible? Yeah, well, going back to Klopp before, that's the one thing that I've always recognised and him, he's always created that like community. Mm-hmm. And you see all the players, like I, again, I'm not, don't confess to be any expert on football, but when they were at the best, I found like, watching it not even from a football perspective, just from watching it from my own perspective. I see players moving the ball around and doing things, which like they've got to be connected in some way yeah. to be able to, to play that way. To it's called a flow, everyone's in like mm-hmm. a flow together. Well, I, think... I don't see that now on the plane, to be honest. And for me, that's that's the missing link where I'm not I'm not seeing it. They don't seem as connected as they were mm. when they were when they were absolutely free. And it could just take like me being part of the team, it could just I don't know what exactly it is, but it could just take one little click to cause yeah. like disruption or whatever but I don't know if that is the case but I've been in teams and a little click can cause yeah, can a lot take one by their yeah. can it basically um, which is a pretty scouse way yeah. of putting it but see one by, get, by the egg I don't know if it's the same type but one, one by the egg ruins the, uh, ruins the bunch or whatever it is but you know where I'm going with it someone you? um an energy vampire I've had as well. Yeah. Like when we was younger, like when we used to, we used to do it psychology when we was like sixteen at the younger mm, age group. That's brilliant, yeah. And this, like they were saying, don't be that energy vampire. So the one who come to training and be like suck the life out of everyone and suck the life out because it does have an effect of on. Of course it does. That goes back to what we were saying before. Over the people who obviously you've got good people around you and who care about you and want the best for you. Obviously that's played some part in you. are Obviously being so. Successful, but another question I've asked, I've had a few, obviously Molly on and the likes of Tony, even Luke Powell was an athlete as well, still is an athlete, but played for Everton when he was younger and, and he's dabbled in fighting and stuff. And I asked most of them, how much of it would you say was down to your mindset in terms of where you've gotten to? Um, and how much of it would you say was physical? I know it's it's virtually impossible to put an exact, but for you personally, how much would you say your attitude and your way of thinking is how big of a part that played in you getting to where you are now? I think 75%. I think if your mindset's not, I want to be the best, um, I can complete these runs, then your physical doesn't come. Because if you're in your mind, you're thinking, I can't do this 1K, then you physically won't be you able won't do to it. do the 1K. And then your talent, your talent can get you so far, but then it's your attitude and wanting to be the best and mm. learn because your talent only gets better if you learn and add to your talent. Of course, yeah. So then that's mindset. You've got to be willing to learn. You've got to You've got take to on information. To take You've got to take knocks. You've got to be able to come overcome these knocks. You've mm. got to be able to react off. So like, say for example, I get dropped. You've got to be able to make sure you add it so then you fight back for your you place. fight back for your place. Mm. But if your mindset's not there, you're out the team again. And then if your mindset's not there again, you're out the team again. I think seventy five percent is your mind. Yeah, I'll probably agree thereabouts. Um obviously your mind's amazing because by the sounds of it, every time you be very competitive, you're very driven. There's never been any Plan B, <laughs> by, the, by the sound of it. I know you've done all right in school and you've got to, you know, these something there. I won't even call it a backup plan because there's absolutely no backup plan. It's just like, you're going to do everything what you're setting out to do in football. And I've got absolutely no doubt that, that you'll achieve, you'll achieve all of that. Um, I always have a couple of questions before we finish. Uh, three of them in general, I've asked them on every, every podcast. But what is your um, personal opinion, right? to you, what's, what's happiness? Me and Tabo, can you give me your, um, without overthinking it, your explanation or your belief what is happiness to you? To me, I'd think like going to football, seeing the girls socialising, having a good session. 
you mean like to me or yeah. like in what do to I you, think happiness what's your, is? What's happiness so, about? So happiness for me is getting up, going to football, training, eating good. Because to me, if I eat good, I train, I'm letting off like, like if I don't train, if on an off day, sometimes I'm agitated. Same so there. I think the training that makes me relief, it's, it's, I'm switching off my mind and focusing on, so like it makes me happy. Mm. So like, obviously I'm happy on other days as well, but like if, if I think I'm happy, it's when I'm playing football. Happiness yeah. is when I'm playing football. So you found your purpose, basically, which is playing football yeah. and doing that every day is what makes you happy. Yeah. Which is why you're so, so successful. And success then, what, you know, what success mean to you? Success to me, I'd say means like, you've got to set goals to be successful because if you don't set goals, how do you know you've been successful? Because you don't know what you're trying to achieve or yeah, you're what not you've achieved. Towards anything, are you? Yeah, so I like setting things I want to achieve. So then once I've done it, you tick it, and then what's next? So to me, that's success. Where because mm. I'm quite black and white, it's either you've done it or you haven't. I know there's going to be dips and ups and downs. Ups and downs. Success doesn't look like a straight line, but you've either done it or you haven't. So a little in my head or in my notes, I, I've got things that I want to achieve and when they've done it, they get a tick. Mm. Okay, so, so pro- having a goal and progressing towards progressing, it. Progressing, yeah. Making progress. Have you got any favourite quotes? I love a good quote, everyone knows. Um, off the top of my head. Oh, I have got loads, but I can't. <laughs> I can't think of you it. You can send me one, okay? No, I want to think of it. Go on then. Because um, you won't leave until you've thought of one, will you? No. I think it's everyone knows it, but like it, it's like so known, but like so effective to me. I think hard work. I knew you were going to say that. Hard work beats talent. talent, 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 doesn't talent doesn't I knew you were going to say that. And, and you're I the th- definition of that really, aren't you? Because I just think... Even though it's so basic and so known, mm. why is it so known? Because it gets said a lot. Like well, the quotes for a reason, Andy. The that's quotes what I for a reason. Say. If you can't remember and the them, the most popular ones are the most common for yeah. a reason. And I think it's you can. So I know growing up, I was talented. I had a good football ability, but if s- someone, how could I show my football ability if someone was beating me to the ball? Because I haven't got the ball, so I can't show my football ability. That's where your hard work hmm. has got to be. And consistency. That's where talent doesn't get shown if you're not working hard. Hmm. If you're getting beat to a sprint, someone else has got the ball, not but you. We're in a city full of talent, aren't we? It's only the hard work, disciplined, and you know, the driven reached, like yourself that reached the top. Exactly. And um, I'm grateful to be from Liverpool. Like, as you said, you've had so many other athletes on here, Molly. Luke, like the city's full of full of athletes, talent, a talent mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. for people to look up to and think I want it. But well, we- I purposely bring success stories on here because for me, my podcast about sharing information, inspiration to try and motivate, especially when we're working with the younger generation, to bring examples of yourself on. Who I can say, look, here's a young girl here, started out in Cowbon <laughs> originally, <laughs> originally <laughs> found a way in football, and now she's basically living the absolute dream i am so made up for you um obviously very very proud as well so i just want to say thank you for coming on the podcast and um if you've got one more message to share especially for the for the younger generation who are watching would you um what would you say i think dream big um if you put your mind to it anything's possible and that's it really let's go champ let's go champ <laughs> <laughs>